Hello, loves. Hello, hello. Javon A. Frazier here, also known as your guiding light. I wanted to take this opportunity to really rift on meditation, on meditation, to really rift on manifestation. Um, I am still in my PJs, which is why I am not coming on video, but I did not want to like miss this opportunity to share what I was feeling on my heart. I just got finished having um, some personal development and one-on-one time with my beautiful wife. And I was writing a post and I was like, you know what? No, I want to like come and really talk to the people because I wanted y'all to feel what I was saying in the moment and I didn't want to like wait to get dressed, go to the shop, set up the camera and all that. So here we go. <laughs> Today is 11-11. It is 11-11-2022. It is one of my favorite days of the year. Um, and it has been for about the past three years. Uh, well, let's say two, really. It has been a favorite day of mine for the past two years um, for a very specific reason. So when I first started dating my wife and, you know, maybe one day, we'll, well, we are going to tell the story because we do have like a Forever Bubble YouTube channel and all that stuff where we're going to talk about relationships. But when I first started dating my wife, who has been my bestie for 20 years, if you don't know the story, my best friend and I never, you know, looked at each other that way. We were simply just best friends, but she was my favorite person in the whole entire planet. Um, outside of my kids, it was my bestie for me because she was the one person who like had my back. You know, you guys know I've had a rough upbringing, a rough life. You should read the book The Hidden Jewel if you don't know. But my bestie was always the one constant in my life, the one person who would be there for me no matter what. And so, after my second divorce, when I got ready to start dating again and I got ready to open my heart up to love again, I was like, I want my ideal person to you know have these qualifications these characteristics and a lot of them were based upon my relationship to my best friend like I want to be able to trust them like I trust my best friend I want to be able to be open with them like I'm open with my best friend I want to be able to like they have to love my kids the way my bestie loves my kids because listen I think if it came down to me or the boys the boys would win not even I think she tells me that all the time like I love you but my boys come first, right? Like, she is so, like, there for my sons and has been since they were born. She's their godmother. So it was like, you know, they have to, the person has to love me and my children or my children the way that, you know, my bestie loves my children and all these things. And so the basis of what I looked for in a relationship was based upon my friendship with my best friend. I always said my best friend was my soulmate. Always. And, but I had no romantic feelings for her. I just loved her as a person. I thought she was beautiful, right? She reminds me of Queen Latifah. Um, but I didn't look at her in that way. There's a reason for why I'm saying this. So fast forward to when she and I started dating, it was like, am I really, like, is this real? Or is this just because, you know, and so every time that I would pray, every time that I wanted to give up, every time that I wanted to, you know, like question, like, I don't know, like maybe I'm tripping. Maybe, maybe I'm, you know, this is a rebound thing. I always saw the number sequence 1111, whether it was, it was 111 on the clock, 1111 on the clock, or somebody's license plate, or like, it was always, it never failed. Every time this woman came to my mind, it was something about the sequence of 111 or 1111. Um, and so that kind of, and when I looked up the number, the numerology of it, it showed me that I was on the right path. Matter of fact, I should have had this already pulled up, but let me just show you guys or tell you guys, because I can't show you, <laughs> the number sequence of 1111. So 1111 angel number meaning um, as previously stated, 1111 can be interpreted as a message from your angels or the universe or whatever higher power you believe in that you're on the right path. If you keep seeing 1111 everywhere, it's a sign to keep going and trust the direction you're moving in as everything is falling into place. 
let's just go to Angel uh, 1111 Love. Um, let's see. Where did we talk about? Uh, I don't know. I can't see it. I can't find it. But anyway, so that was that was like. you know, my sign to keep going. So, I truly, and then, you know, becoming more aware of like the portal that is 1111 and manifestation, I really, really love this day because what I have found out about my ability to manifest, and it came as a joke one day, I was telling a story about how I used to always say I wanted my person to be like my bestie. I wanted them to make me feel like my bestie, my bestie, my bestie. I said, I didn't know, but I was literally manifesting my bestie because now I'm married to my best friend, literally. And so I was like, you know what, come to think of it. And you know, there's there's more to the story and we'll get into depths about that. But like why I really feel like a manifesting motherfucker. Cause if you know my bestie, then you gonna be like, oh yeah, you, yeah. We always joke like it must've been some heebie jeebie uh, ungy bungy stuff that you put on her but um, that showed me like girl you can manifest anything like you literally have like like I am in my dream relationship so here's what being in my relationship has taught me about manifestation and now what I now know about like learning and focusing more deeply in manifestation I know today everybody's going to be talking about manifestation but I just wanted to come and riff on it from my perspective and my point of view and my experience because I have manifested so much in my life that I didn't even realize that that's what I was doing like my 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 coach my mentor one of them is Melanie Ann Lair right she was my mentor before she was my mentor she was my mentor in my head I was in all of her free containers um, but I had not invested anything monetarily into her yet because her prices are like she's a million dollar coach and her prices are prices such so oh my gosh I just thought about how much money I invested it was a sequence of 111 but anyway so there was this moment where I took a chance on myself I invested you know $111 and from that I manifested um, a another free well not even another but I manifested like a credit of $7,777 that could go to another course so then I got into this dream program that I wanted to be in and then from there I desired to have a one-on-one with her I actually um, posted on her on her comment or I made a comment on her post where I was like, I so desire to be in your world. Like one day we'll be one-on-one and we'll be sipping herbal tea and talking about life and all of my successes, right? And literally, like I think the next day or two days later, I got a call or a, a message that I had won a one-on-one with her. And so that was like the dream, right? Because holy crap, I, I manifested it, but I didn't think it was gonna happen that quickly. But it was even more like, yes girl you you really real about this thing is that I'm sipping my cup of tea because that's what Javon does right Javon always has a cup of herbal tea but she had a cup too and I was like okay don't trip don't trip and so when we got one-on-one I was like Melanie what's in your cup and she was like oh my god I was like I manifested this she was like oh my god this is herbal tea she was like I normally drink coffee but today I'm drinking herbal tea oh my god you manifested it and I'm like fucking right I did because I'm a motherfucking manifester so and I don't know like my um what is it called when you're like a manifesting generator or fuck I mean oops Mm. well we're here I can't think of it but not not natal chart not life number the name eludes me but it's pretty much where it talks about like the kind of person that you are like are you a generator are you a man I don't know what I am I'm just saying that I'm a manifester okay um because without even realizing that that's what I was doing in my life I have manifested so much good and bad and so here's what I have learned about manifesting manifestation flows where energy goes that's the first thing that I would say what you fixate your energy on, what you fixate your energy towards, manifestation has to happen. It is inevitable. 
We are always manifesting. That is inevitable. We all have the ability to manifest. That is inevitable. Why? Because we all have the ability to create. Manifestation just means we create something. I created this. I created this ideal relationship with my wife. I created the hidden jewel. Let me tell you something about the hidden jewel wellness boutique. If you were with me from the beginning, and I know some of you have been, you remember the very first location was a one room inside of a business center. We were in the same building with a tax accountant, a cleaning company, and a construction company, and a, um, what was the other thing that was in the guy who owned it? A security company. It was not a spa, it was not anything, you know, but it was set up when you stepped into my doors because I drew out, when I first started looking for a location, I drew out the floor plan for the hidden jewel. I knew that when you walked in the doors that I wanted there to be a seating area and I wanted it to be the tea area to the right. And I wanted it to have, um, you know, the products and stuff on, in the front. And then when you walked to the back, there, there was gonna be like the spa area, like the service rooms, the yoni rooms or whatever, right? And so if you remember when you walked into the front office, or not front office, but when you walked into the office of the first building, to the right, because it was only one room, 144 feet, but to the right was my desk and, on, and right beside my desk was where you went to fix, or where I fixed your cup of tea. There's a little table with a tea kettle and the tea, but the tea was there and then to, your left, if you're standing at the front door, on the left side of the room was one little shelf that had my products, and then to the back of the room was the divider and the steam chairs. Well, when you look, when you walk into the hidden jewel now, what do you see? You, it's a larger space, but the floor plan is still the same. When we walked into that building, I knew that that was my building that I had manifested. The T-bar is to your right with the sitting area. The whole front area is, you know, the reception and the retail space. You got the retail space in the back. You have a meditation corner, which is what I wanted. You have, and in the back, you have the Yoni room, which is what I desired. It is drawn, it is like literally laid out exactly how I drew it in the beginning. When you see things, when you, when you, when you, I'm getting ahead of myself. Manifestation is your desire, is your ability to create. You create from your sight. You create from your vision. You create from your womb space. And when I say sight, I don't just mean your eyes. I mean your third eye. Remember, I said that as womb keepers, and I'm talking to womb keepers because that's, you know, what we are here at the Hidden Jewel, but everybody has this ability because your sacral chakra is where you create from. But as womb keepers, you create from your womb space first and then it gets into your third eye and then the rest of your body you know the logistical part and all that stuff comes into play but you feel it and you desire it from your womb space first people think we we create from our third eye we imagine from our third eye no 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 beloved the desire starts in your womb space so i think actually the first step would be the desire if I had to lay it out, I'm not taking notes. If I, you know, cause I just want to rip. But the first step would be your desire. I said on my live uh, the other night, if you desire it, that means that it's available to you. Any, beyond what you can ask or think. The desire is just the fundamental proof that it's available because you desire it. So desiring it and believing that it's available to you that is the foundation of manifestation. Because once you desire it, you have to then believe that it is available to you. Well, how do you get past the thoughts of maybe it's not, maybe it is? If I desire it, that means it's available. Because God's spirit, source, energy, the universe would not give me a desire that is not available to me. It don't work like that. My wife always says, God love me too much. <laughs> If the desire is placed within my womb space, it is available to me and I am worthy of it. So let's cancel out that negative thought, that limiting belief. Then you gotta put your energy to that thing. Whatever you desire, you gotta put the energy to it. My wife and I are reading a book called Rich as Fuck by Amanda Francis and the book is about, you know, 
money, but from a manifestation standpoint, because that's now what I'm working on, like manifesting like money. I've already manifested the love of my dreams. I've already manifested, you know, the business of my dreams. I have the friends that I've always wanted, the tribe that I was like searching for. I manifested my tribe. My best friend, Leah Deluzio, is like out of this world, everything that I desire in a friend and more, right? She is like weird like me she is into the ungy bungy like me she has her dude with the fuck mo- like like leah is like great and she is here to do great things in the world and so like we can talk about everything from our desire to like make major change and shifts on the planet and and impact the globe to our desires to be amazing wives and mothers right like she's literally like my best friend and she is the owner if you don't know her she is the uh, creator of and the founder of her sacred circle it is an event company where she offers like high vibrational events to women all over the globe she has a free online global community called her sacred circle goddess collective on facebook and so definitely look her up she is like like me but like in another person I'm the garden light, she's Leah in light, and when we get together, it's lit as fuck. So, I have literally created everything that I ever desired. The only thing left is the money and the little girl. I want a little girl with everything in me. So when y'all see me, but, 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 I have my niece, and my niece is my little chocolate drop. Like, that is like, oh my gosh. But now I want my own little girl. So, when y'all see me pregnant with a little girl, just know that I just, I you know manifest to her too but but she is coming after the money because it's expensive so we got to manifest the money first so yes so we're reading this book uh rich as fuck by amanda francis and it talks about you know our ability to manifest and how it starts with the same thing like you have to believe that it's available to you and she breaks down like she cancels all of these limiting beliefs, right? And it's so interesting because I I knew that I had a limiting belief around a lot of things, right? My life was not picture perfect. Everything in my life, first of all, starting from, you know, being born to a teen mother, right? Statistically speaking, the odds are stacked against me. And then you factor in, although my mother's amazing, she was an amazing mom, you know, we had our challenges, but her as a mother, like, great. Um, Read the book if you want to get caught up. But as far as the things that I've encountered, you know, the sexual assault, you know, the being on drugs, the trying to kill myself, like everything, like there's so many reasons why I should not be your guiding light. So many reasons. But the reasons that I believed I should outweighed all of my limiting beliefs. My desire to help the world, my desire to see people healed, my desire to help people like really get what I have gotten, right? To to see the joys that can come from the discomfort of shadow work, to see the love that can come from like doing the work and opening your heart again after two failed divorces, like you know, well, the divorce was a success, the two failed marriages, like my desire to help you all was greater than my limiting beliefs. Your desire has to be greater than your limiting belief. And you put all of your energy into that desire. That's where I was going with that, talking about the book. Because during reading the book, you know, reading reading the book with my wife and I, we started looking up like the definition of energy and, you know, what is energy? And pretty much energy is action. So when people say, you know, you got to put your energy towards it, you got to, you know, your energy has to align. Your actions have to align with the thing that you are desiring. You cannot say that you desire to lose weight, but your actions say differently because you eat everything. You don't push anything away. You don't, you know, have healthy options. You cannot say you desire to be in a loving relationship when your energy, the actions that you are putting out into the universe are contradictory. If you are constantly giving yourself to people who do not deserve you, if you are constantly giving yourself to people who are unavailable to you or to people who belong to other people, the likelihood of you manifesting the desires of your heart are slim to none. Your actions 
i.e. energy vibration frequency has to align with the things that you desire it is sending a huge mental mind fuck to the universe to god to spirit to source to energy to the great i am if you continue to do something that is contradictory to the things that you say that you desire when you come to me to the hidden jewel the very first thing that i tell you to do is to set yourself up to receive whatever it is that you are wanting you got to set yourself up for that thing you want love love yourself before i got with my wife I was so good to me because I knew that I wanted a love that was out of this world. And so I whined and dined myself like no other. I got up, I made my bed every morning because that's what I would do if I was married. You know, like I'm, I'm, I've got to be honest. Like I, I was a better wife than, than I was single. Right. Like, like I cooked more as a wife. I still cooked for my kids, but I had two small children. They didn't want like the four course meals. They were good with like you know, quick little, you know, one pot skillet meal or whatever. But like the Sunday meals and all that, I cooked one big meal on Sunday and then, you know, leftovers or skillet meals or pizza or whatever. I, this was like back in the day. This is not now. Now I cook because I love to. Um, and I want to be healthy and I want my family to be healthy. So it doesn't matter, married or not, if my wife is home or not, I still eat good. But I digress. This is the riff, you guys. It's random, but stay with me. Where was I going with this? This is what happens, but I normally edit this out, but I'm not. Okay, so when I knew that I wanted to have a love, I would get up, I would make up my bed, but I would like leave myself like something on the bed. So like a card, some flowers, you know, a bottle of water so that when I got home, it was like, oh, this is so sweet. They were so, they were thinking of me. They knew that I was gonna have a bad day and they're so thoughtful. I was thoughtful to myself. Y'all, if y'all know my wife, my wife is the most thoughtful person ever. If you guys were there for the self-love event that we did, Leah and I did, the theme was all about self-love, right? My wife literally bought a bouquet of flowers, and it was on Valentine's Day. She bought a bouquet of roses for me, one for Leah, and then another one to hand out roses to each attendee. Like, she is the most thoughtful person. Like, when I'm out healing the world one, you know, womb at a time, you better believe my wife is somewhere making sure I'm good. I come home, she has cooked, she like, you know, whatever, whatever, depending on what I need that day. It's like she she thinks of it all. But I feel like I manifested that because even though nobody, like I knew that I left myself a card and a bottle of water and whatever, but coming home at the end of the day, it was like, oh, it was like that little, like, how did you know? You know what I mean? I created that. I set myself up. I got myself in the energy and the vibration of like, this is what I'm accustomed to. This is what I'm used to. So setting yourself up to receive, aligning your actions, your energy, your vibrations, your frequency to the things that you desire. Believing that it's already yours, acting as if it is already yours. People say faking it till you make it. I say faith it till you make it. There was a day when I wrote in my journal and I read it, the journal entry to my wife this morning. I literally wrote like today is a great day. Today is a prosperous day. I'm going to make more money than I've ever made in my entire career. Sales, sales, sales. I put like payday stickers all over it. Money, 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 money. Y'all, I made the most money in that day than I have ever made in business to date in one day I made more in that one day than I have in months or in a full month of being in business matter of fact I need to go do that again acting as if it's already yours so I literally would do things to get me in the vibration I desire a luxurious lifestyle. There is a lady, what is her name? On Instagram, Jackie. I wanna live like Jackie. She is so luxurious. Everything in her house is white and pristine and clean and to the heated floors, to the the white crisp duvet covers, like, oh my gosh. 
So when I knew that I wanted to like manifest more in my life, a luxurious lifestyle, a luxurious bedroom, because like my bedroom is like it for me. I literally would start small. So like, what do you do? Like, what says luxury to me? White linens. So I threw out all of my different colored washcloths and I bought all white linens. Something very small, but it made a huge impact because when I opened my linen closet and I saw all the white towels neatly, neatly folded and smelling of uh, lavender, it made me feel very luxurious to step out of the shower into my thick white robe and my thick white towel and my thick white slippers, you know, and to get into my white comforter. It felt luxurious. Right. My bedroom that I um, when my wife and I moved into our home and we decorated our house like literally it was the bedroom of my dreams. It looked like a hotel. It looked like, because that's that's what I want. That was like the first room in the house that we invested in, we decorated in, because that to me, where you sleep, where you lay head, your head, where you dream, that's where you create. So I made a point of like making sure that the bedroom was like the most luxurious part of the whole house. Eventually the rest of the house too, but like I started with the bedroom. So what can you do right now to get you in the vibration of the things that you're trying to manifest? I desire a home of my dreams, right? My wife and I have already talked about it. The other day, I went, looked at the people that, because I already know who I want to build my home. I went there. I talked to the lady, I did a full tour. I picked out the doorknobs, I picked out the bathtub, I picked out the type of floor they have, like this linen looking floor. I don't know if it's heated or not, but it's for the kitchen, so I'm okay with that. But in the bathroom, I wanna heat, heat the floors in the bathroom. But I know what kind of flooring. And then I went to the model that I want, and I sat on the couch, and I, I envisioned myself pretended as if I was, you know, sitting there I stood at the kitchen counter and acted as if I was cooking and I could see my wife sitting on the couch I went upstairs I saw my boys in their rooms playing video games with each other let me tell you about my sons I don't get this but I do but I don't my boys will be in the same house but in different rooms playing with each other talking to each other on the phone or on their headset it's so weird but I envision that they're all in their separate rooms. And so I go upstairs and I tell them that dinner is ready. I envision myself making my breakfast. I walked outside on the balcony and I sat down and I envision myself sitting there with my cup of tea, surrounded by greenery, breathing it in. Even now, my life, I say make your life, live your life as ceremony. My life is ceremonious. I am constantly envisioning and manifesting and dreaming as I live. When I'm creating your, your guys' herbs and products, I envision you drinking the herbs and it feeling so good going down. I envision it tasting so good to you. I envision the medicinal properties going to where it needs to go in your physical body and energetically I envision it leveling you up you feeling the vibration you feeling happy I dance while I'm making your products when I when I'm walking through the hidden jewel I'm talking to you all I see you coming I see you releasing I see you you know buying the products I see you feeling happy to spend your money like I my whole entire life it's ceremony, it's ritual, it's me envisioning and manifesting. And can I tell you what is a key component of manifestation? Play. Imagination. Remember when we were little girls and we would play makeup or play dress up? Or we would play teacher? Or we would play mommy? That is the maiden part of us. Hello, feminine archetypes or feminine energies. Manifestation requires you to be like the maiden. 
requires you to be playful, requires you to be naive and to just believe and trust that it's yours. You don't have any proof. You don't need any proof. It is yours. Be so specific with the things that you desire. Be so specific. And believe that it's already yours. Conduct yourself as if it's already yours. I used to... I, before I opened the hidden jewel, I used to stand in my mirror and I would have speeches in my mirror and teaching as if I was training women all over the globe. I still do. When I, when I record, even right now, I'm envisioning you driving your car. I'm envisioning you cooking for your family while you're listening to this. I'm envisioning you listening to this while you're sitting in the tub in your spiritual bath with your herbs from the hidden jewel. Your womb is awakening as you hear my words. You're having a light bulb moment. You're having an aha moment. You're having a chin check moment. You're having a soul yes moment. Whether you're in Italy, whether you're in Florida, whether you're in Canada right now, whether you're in Africa right now. I don't know why Zimbabwe just came to my head. I think I just like that name, Zimbabwe. Whether you, there's this lady, I see her right now. She just sat back in her chair with her legs crossed. She has on her business suit with her pencil skirt and her jacket. And she sat back like, hmm. And she makes more money than any of my clients I have ever, ever worked with to date. But she has heard this riff and she has had a light bulb moment. And she is now searching for the Hidden Jewel Wellness Boutique. You can go to www.hiddenjewelboutique.com to book a one-on-one womb work session with Giovanni Frazier. Your guiding light. Nice to meet you. I cannot wait to work with you. My clientele is expanding to lawyers and judges and doctors and like, you know, psychiatrists and all these women who, ah, okay, senators, all these women who play a vital role in like impacting the conversation around women's health and getting in rooms that I can never get into but because they heard my voice and they know the work that we do and they know my desire to op- to awaken womb keepers all over the world that they are going to come and they are going to help me carry out the mission I see it, I believe it I desire it, it's mine what do you feel, what do you desire what can you see I am constantly playing make believe I'm constantly playing dress up I just had this vision of me in all white head wrap and I'm helping a lady give birth candles lit everywhere I have a desire for the hidden jewel to become a birthing center Or you can have birth out in nature or with elements of nature. I'm getting off on a tangent, but this is a riff. What do you desire? And be so specific, not I desire to be healthy. Get so specific. What do you want to do with the life that you are desiring? How will your life, the quality of your life improve when you get the thing that you desire? And then operate from that space. How would you feel when that very thing that you desire is in your reality and operate from that space? Embody it. Feel it into your body. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Inside and out. Believe it and embody it with everything in you. Get so specific about the smells. Get so specific about the colors. Get so specific about the number of people the feeling, the taste. I'm literally seeing me in that house, my dream home. I'm cooking in that white kitchen. There's a candle lit in the corner because, you know, I'm a minimalist at this point, so there's not a lot of clutter on the counter. 
The dog is in her bed in the corner. My wife is on the couch watching TV. And we're talking as I'm cooking, which is like my favorite thing to do. Like I love sitting with her while she's cooking and just talking or like me talking to her as I'm cooking. Like it's it's mm. your kitchen is one of your healing rooms in your home. The kitchen and the bedroom are my two favorite healing areas in my home. So I absolutely love like it's something about communion over cooking. That is amazing to me. But yeah, I can see it. What can you see? What do you desire? I am going to end this because this can go on and on. But what I want to say is I want to remind you that you are always manifesting because for every good thing that I've manifested in my life, I can also look back at the bad things that I've manifested. We are always manifesting. The difference is when you shift your perspective on what you want to manifest and you align yourself to that thing. Because we're always in alignment. People say get in, get in alignment. You're always in alignment and you're always manifesting. But when you become aware and you realize your power, you can now shift the things that you manifest. I'm so excited for the life that you're creating. In case no one has told you today, beloved, please allow me to be the first. You are the divine creator. You have everything that you need to create the life that you desire right now. It does not matter where you've come from. It does not matter what you've done in the past. It doesn't matter what you've allowed in your in your state of being unaware. Now that you have heard these words, now that something has awakened in you, now that something has stirred in you, you have the ability to create whatever you desire. The evidence is already there. The proof is already there. And the permission, not that you need it, but if you do, I, Javon A. Frazier, also known as your guiding light, give you full permission to play out fully to create the life you desire to dream like you've never dreamt before to allow yourself to say the things that you've been scared to vocalize speak your truth speak your desires align yourself to your desires and 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 embody what it means to have that very thing operate as if it's already yours because it is if you desire it baby it's already yours it's just a matter of manifesting it to the point where we all can see it and here's the thing that's what i want to say too manifest manifestation is just the physical evidence of what is already available in the spiritual realm or the energetic realm remember when i said if you desire it is already yours if you desire it that means it already exists So the manifestation is just the physical evidence of what you already know is yours. I knew I was worthy of having a loving relationship. I knew I could impact millions. I know that I can impact millions of women with my words. It is already in motion. I just have to align myself to it so that it can come to me. I just have to conduct myself as such so that way when it when it does hit, I already know how to act. I already know how to move. I love you all so much. Remember to discover your inner spark and let it shine because the world is waiting on you to just be you. And when a woman heals her womb, she heals the world. Manifestation and womb wisdom go hand in hand. Manifestation and womb work go hand in hand. You create from your womb. You want to know what's truly the desires? We say the desires of your heart. No, but it's the desires of your womb space. 
you want to you want to connect with your desires tap into your room space I feel led to lead us into a meditation right now. <sighs> God, we first thank you for this moment. I thank you for the words that have come through me in this moment. I thank you for every ear that hears these words, every ear that it falls upon. up to you as a living vessel I make way for you to move spirit speak through me guide me as I guide others on this meditation journey we thank you for this powerful day this portal thank you that as we embark on this journey of meditation together that we are stepping into something new that our lives will never ever be the same again thank you for evidence manifested proof that what we desire is happening I thank you for this being the most successful offering that I've put out I thank you for what comes from even this I invite you to close your eyes and get in a comfortable position whether you're lying down or sitting up or straight. Prepare your heart, your mind, and your womb space for sacred meditation. I invite you to begin taking deep, cleansing breaths. In through your nose and out of your mouth. We are opening our hearts now. In through your nose, out with the sigh. Opening our own space, tapping in connecting to the most sacred parts of ourselves, in through the nose, last one, make it count, out with a sigh, ah. I invite you to begin rubbing your hands together, creating your own life force energy within you, calling forth the energy, the action, the motion, the creative energy that lies within you. Today is a powerful, magical day. You can create any day that you desire, but when you have the mm, collective force of the cosmos, of the energy, knowing that women all over the globe are, are manifesting today, right? Collectively, we are focusing our intentions on manifesting the things that we desire. We are tapping into this energetic pool the waters are trembling and we are all stepping in. Mm, it's a powerful day. Give an intention to this energy that you are creating. Give it a word, a name, a color. For me, I am manifesting more. I am manifesting. I am manifesting more. Abundance in clients, an abundance of money, an abundance of women 
connecting to this work all over the globe, manifesting clients in every corner of the globe, women in different languages, but who feel the energy of real medicine. I see you, I'm connecting to you, connecting to your room space now. Hello, gorgeous. Hello, goddess. Greetings. Hola. Bonjour. Hmm. Hmm. Ashe, namaste. I honor you, sweet goddess. Right where you are. In the different time zone. I welcome you. see all of you even now sharing out, sharing out, sharing out, sharing out, sharing out, telephone, telling them about the hidden jewel, telling them about Giovanni Fraser and your guiding light. The intention for this manifestation today is to expand my reach, to expand the reach of the hidden jewel, to expand the reach of womb wisdom, the way we share it here at the hidden jewel in this boutique to share the message of Moon Keeper Academy. See it. I'm looking at an image of the globe right now. And from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, there's purple lines going all over the globe. Purple lines going all over the globe. Purple lines. And they're switching and they're pinging and they're going different places and different places are being lit up being lit up. I see it. 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 I feel it. I'm sticking another pin in another area across the globe. An order just came in from another area across the globe. Products are going in places I've never even been. Messages are going in places I've never even been. My name is going in places I've never even been. People are purchasing the Womb Keeper Academy, the Advocate Program, in different in different areas. Pings, 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 all over, day and night. Pings, pings. I wake up to different pings. What are you seeing right now? Close your eyes. I invite you to step into your room space. My apologies, I'm always in my room space, so my desires are, <laughs> my vision is taking over, but I invite you to step into your room space. Your womb is welcoming you. She's saying, I've been waiting. You about to do some stuff today, girl. Your womb is excited. She is lit the fuck up. There is no need to take inventory because what is in your room space is so full. You're noticing things that you hadn't even noticed before because she has been waiting for you to really ask her, what are the desires? It's so full, it's so full of things that you've never even seen before. Mirrors and boxes and, 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 and uh, uh, conversations, people, things, items feelings, emotions, it's overwhelming. This is something you've never felt before. You feel so full, so vibrant, so alive, right? Your room space is buzzing. You feel it even now, she's buzzing, she's buzzing, she's buzzing, she's buzzing. She's lit up. There's no need to walk to the window. Your whole room space is filled with everything you've ever desired and even things that you weren't allowing yourself to feel or to see or to accept is right there in front of you. You can reach out and you can touch it. I see my little girl. She is adorable. She has her mother's eyes and her mother's nose. <laughs> see the clients in different time zones having sessions while the house is quiet because my client is in a different time zone what do you see what do you feel what can you 
What do you embody? What are the emotions that are coming over you? This is not about your current state. These, this is about the desires that is available for you. Your wildest dreams. Here in your womb space, you can play. It's safe to let your desires be free. It is safe to allow yourself to feel what it feels like to have everything that you imagine. It doesn't matter what society has said that you can have outside of your womb space. It doesn't matter what circumstances has happened. When you are in your womb space, you are in your safe place. This is your playroom. Remember when we were little kids? I always wanted to have a playroom. I did at one point in my life, but there was like the one room in the house where like all your toys were there and there was big paper all over the room so you could like draw on the walls because it was paper on the walls and you could be as loud as you want and you can run and jump and flip and flop because that room was designed specific for, specifically for you to play fully. Your womb space is where you can play fully Allow yourself to imagine, to see it, to touch it, to visualize it, to smell it, to taste it. What color is your dream car? Your ideal person, how tall are they? What does their voice sound like? It's so crazy. I said I wanted my person to have a deep voice. Have y'all heard my wife speak? How do you feel when you're with your person? How does it feel to wake up every morning in the house that you dream of, in the bed that you dream of, next to the person that you desire, and you walk into the closet and all that you desire, for me, it's a shit ton of shoes. I don't really care about my clothes, but my shoes and my purses. I have more shoes than I could ever imagine Flats, boots, sneakers, red bottoms. Ugh. Today I'm picking out a cream color shirt with some black pants. But my shoes are like, I think that's leopard print. Red bottoms. The toe of my shoe has a pointy toe and the toe of my shoe is black and it has gold specks in it. Mm-hmm. Mm, mm. Stilettos, of course. And I'm putting on my makeup. And I'm getting in my white Jeep. With the caramel leather seats. And I open up my sunroof. And I'm driving to my building that I own. The hidden jewel runs to the team. And there are clients, and there are different resident healers in their own rooms. I sit at my desk. do my work and then I head back in my car and I go check on our fulfillment center and I have a meeting with our local farmers about our herbs and how they're growing and I have a meeting with the school board about how we are going to change the curriculum to talk about wound wellness How does it feel to live your life, to live the life that you desire? How does it feel? I remember I used to be so afraid to speak my desires out loud because I used to feel like somebody would steal them, but that's not true. It's safe to speak your desires. It's safe to live your desires.
Allow yourself to play in your womb space, to play with your desires, to play with what it feels like. And know that you can come back to this at any moment. You can come back to the playroom, the showroom that is your womb space and play with your desires and remind yourself what it feels like to have these things, to be these things, to embody these things. And I don't want to end this meditation like I normally do. You can stay and play as long as you want. I am going to go and journal how it feels while I'm in this energy and in this feeling. And I'm going to journal all that I just shared with you and all that I just saw. But know that you can come back to this at any moment. Have fun playing.